Hello, I'm making a video and this is something I've not done for a while for reasons which I will get into at some point in the future. But for today I want to talk about, um, I'm not sure it was my second job or third, but um, I started to work for the National Coal Board as a young fella, as a young book, and I um, became a miner. I was actually hired as a, an apprentice electrician, so not, not a real pickaxe, swinging, coal shoveling, sweaty, bare chested miner, but I was, I mean, even though, you know, we were pit electricians, we were actually miners. So I showed up on day one with a whole lot of other wet behind the ears kids and we were given boots, leather unlined pit boots, which had the steel toe cap on the outside. Um, and people I, well, not people, but like one individual I knew was so taken by these um, boots with the steel toe cap on the outside. And he took all the paint off the steel toe cap and polished it and used to walk around with these like highly polished, um, steel boots basically he was a tug sort of and they gave us I think a couple of pairs of overalls and a, a bright yellow safety helmet which nobody liked so we had all our gear and then we we're in this room and we had to sort of like sign up if you like um, to agree to work for the National Coal Board which was like as it says, the, the British coal producing body. And just as we were about to sign, this other guy came in, who was you know, one of the people that was running the place, with a whole load of forms. And he said we had to sign them. And I said, oh, what's this? And he said, National Union of Mine Workers. And I thought, okay, but I'm actually not working for the National Coal Board yet, so until I sign to say that I'm working for the National Coal Board, I can't really join the National Union of Mine Workers. Hello, it seems logical. And his response was, um, if you don't fucking sign that, you don't fucking work for the National Coal Board. So quite clearly, even though this was actually voluntary, because I, I asked, asked him, is this voluntary or what? And he said, yes, it is. Uh, I said, but it isn't. You're telling me that if I don't sign and join the National Union of Mine Workers, then I don't work for the National Coal Board. And I, I didn't like that because that, would, to me, was bullying. Now, I was happy enough to be a member of the National Union of Mine Workers, but not to be forced into being a member of the National Union of Mine Workers. And that's the thing that really bugged me. The fact that I didn't really have a choice. So I kind of wanted to, to, to follow that career path at the time. So I signed and I first became a member of the National Union of Mine Workers. And then I started working for the National Coal Board. But there's the level of bullying, coercion, call it what you will, was absolutely there. Now, the same issue reared its head some years later when I was working at the colliery, Crompton Colliery, for those who know it. Yay, Crompton, Crompton. And um, again, it was the National Union of Mine Workers, and they'd sort of like come up with this scheme. Uh, in liaison with the uh, the revenue people and it was called a covenant and if everybody signed this covenant uh, voluntarily then the National Union of Mine Workers could get some kind of tax relief but it had to be a voluntary covenant and I'm thinking back to my first day and I'm asking the union guy so this is voluntary right oh yeah it's voluntary so I said, okay, fine, I'm not signing. And um, I think my friend Billy Hill also said he wasn't gonna sign. And I mean, this was some years ago, but as I recall, we held out for about six weeks um, without signing. 
And initially, no one knew about it, but gradually people got to hear that these two guys hadn't signed the voluntary covenant, which of course wasn't voluntary. Hello, we're being bullied and coerced again. Um, now, if you're wondering what this has got to do with Scientology, here goes. The Scientologists have an organization called the International Association of Scientologists, and they've never claimed that it be voluntary. But if you want to be a Scientologist, you have to join the International Association of Scientologists. And it's in some ways like the National Union of Mine Workers and the National Coal Board. If you don't join the International Association of Scientologists, you can't do Scientology, you can't buy books. Now, I'm not suggesting that anyone should. In fact, quite the contrary, I'm suggesting that people stop doing it and run for the hills. But again, you've got this level of bullying and coercion. And of course, as John Sweeney so aptly named his book Church of Fear, there's this whole fear that if you don't do Scientology, then you know, you're doomed forever, which you know, clearly, like guys, that is just bullshit. So how it works is that when you first contact a Scientologist, you first buy your first book, do your first service or whatever, this was in my day, it could be different now, you got a free six months membership of the IAS, which entitled you to buy the books. So in other words, you can't even buy a book unless you remember, you get one of these free six months memberships that allows new people to buy books. And if you didn't fill in the form when you bought your book, don't worry, they do it for you when you'd gone. Um, that was standard practice. When your free six months membership's up, you have to buy an annual membership. The annual membership at the time, I have no idea what it is now, but it was £300. That's like, you know, a pound a day, which isn't a lot, but it could be a lot when you've got to find £300. Like... It's hard enough to find £300 to fix your car, never mind to join the International Association of Scientologists. So, you then move up on these different levels, and uh, I'm not going to talk about all of them, because they go up into the stratosphere with super-duper planetarium, hyper-trapezoid status. Anyway, it starts off with the free six months, then it goes to the annual membership of £300 at the time, and then if you wanted to buy a lifetime membership, you could pay a thousand pounds for that. Now, obviously the younger you are, the better a lifetime membership will be because you have it for longer. Um, and of course, Scientologists believe that you live over and over and over and over. So it's kind of, why don't you get like a, a forever membership, hey? I don't know. Why is it just a lifetime? Oh, um, so the, the current rates, uh, I think, are annual membership $300, lifetime membership $2,000. That's gone up. And then from there, you become a sponsor for $5,000, a crusader for $10,000. You get on the honor roll for $20,000. Or another way to get on the honor roll is to recruit 20 other people. I don't think many people have gone that route. As a patron, that you would have to pay $40,000. Patron with honours, $100,000. Patron meritorious, $100, uh, sorry, $250,000. Gold patron meritorious, a million bloody fucking dollars. And then you get the senior honour roll, if you can get 100 new members into the IAS or contribute to IAS expansion in some stellar fashion, you'll get on the senior honor roll. That's the, um, the ranking, if you like, of a Scientologist. And you can't be one if you're not a member of the IAS. And you can't, you just can't, that's it. Now, the interesting thing is that... Uh, New levels are added, and the it just gets absolutely bizarre. You've got Platinum Laureate, Diamond Laureate, Patron Excalibur, and th this goes on top of all these other things. So all these like crazy, crazy things. So in other words, it's like you keep paying, you get to the top of the tree. Oh, well, that's my membership sorted out. No, it's not. 
because they will just keep creating levels above the level that you're at so you have to keep on paying more and guess what you pay more and more each time so someone like nancy cartwright who's probably a diamond maximus has given 40 million dollars to scientology for what for nothing it is it's a scam it's a con we know that um but it's the whole going back to the national union of mine workers thing it's, it's the bullying aspect you know um even in this so-called uh, wonderful religion they bully you into doing things that you don't want to do and coercion and it's just absolutely rotten because the scientologists are doing it from the point of view that they know what's best for you you haven't got a clue you don't know they know what's best for you and that attitude sorry it ain't gonna work anyway i've talked far too long and it's a long time since i made a video and i'm happy to have made one and it is about scientology in a roundabout way bingo good night